He blessed me to preach the unadulterated, unmitigated, unchanged, undistorted, unreconstructed gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter said, seeing therefore you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit of the unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. And so we come here tonight to preach nothing other than the word of God. I want to thank Brother Clay Williams for considering me and allowing me the opportunity to speak on this great program. And I want to commend Brother Williams, who did an outstanding job, and uh, Brother Ellaby. Both of them uh, did uh, uh, a great job. I want to express my appreciation to those who are in the audience uh, tonight. Uh, my wife was mentioned like for her to raise a hand, and my sister's here, uh, Camilla Gibbs Woods. Amen. I'm delighted to have them, and I'm delighted to see many of you that I've known for years, and you've known me uh, for years. And uh, I'm just I'm just delighted to represent Brother. Adolphus K. Smith and the Avenue K. Church of Christ in Fort Worth, Texas. I subjected myself to him. He's a good man. And, and if you want to change your life, which I have, I'm not perfect, but when you want to change your life, find a mentor. And so God has blessed me to reach that point. And uh, Brother Clay Williams is also one of my mentors. He didn't know that, but I I respect him. He, he's a good man and a great preacher. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. That's the Greek form of Isaiah there. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them this day. Is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? Book, chapter, and verse. Now, I want to warn you that this lesson will be like taking a long trip with a skunk in the car. It's going to be tough. The context is self-explanatory, however, I do think it's necessary to explain the connection between this most vital subject and the events in the text before us. Let me begin by noting the fact that this is the only place in the first four books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where this powerful story is recorded. And we find several points of interest that time will not allow me to expound upon. But the most important point I would like to make is that Jesus, that Jesus makes the most important point he makes is that the prophecy of his personal anointing as the Messiah was indeed the absolute truth when he claimed that in himself this passage was fulfilled when he said in verse 21 this day is this passage fulfilled in your ears it is happening right now it is being fulfilled right now 
I'm the one it's referring to. When we look at Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verses 1 and 2, listen to what the word of God says. Well, the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord God, watch this now, is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the place of the scripture Jesus read and applied to himself, which men he claimed to be the Messiah or the Savior of the world. He told the woman at the well uh, he was the Messiah and when John the Baptist was in prison in Matthew chapter 11 John uh, sent two of his disciples and uh, he said now you go and ask Jesus art thou he that should come or shall we look for another John said you go and tell you go and tell John show him how what you see how the blind receive that sight I'm all right about it I'm just telling you that Jesus claimed to be the Messiah and the people didn't like it and they tried to kill him why he was in Nazareth where he was brought up and the people knew him and they concluded that he was guilty of blasphemy, claiming to be God. I would love to expound upon this, but in order to address the subject, I need to point out another important point in this story. What is it? It is the part where the Bible says that Jesus found the place where it was written. Luke 4, 16 and 17, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. In order for him to have read it, it had to be written. Am I right about it? Verse 17, and there was delivered unto him the, I want you to underline, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Help me somebody to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yeah. Now this passage inspires me. Why does it inspire you, Brother Gibbs? It inspires me because we still have this group around. The poor, the brokenhearted, those who are bound, and those who are in need of being set free. Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth. Oh, and the truth shall make you free. It shall set you free. Free from what? Ultimately, free from the power of sin, free from the penalty of sin, and free from the presence of sin. Now, before I go too far on this point, let me back up, slow down, and underline the word book and the phrase he found the place where it was written. Verse 17, now, even though there were no chapters and verses at that time, Jesus finding the place where it was written establishes an important principle. What is that principle? The importance of backing up what we do and claim with scripture. Book, chapter, and verse. Now, this is an old familiar phrase. Those who are concerned about, who are concerned about calling things by Bible names and doing things the Bible way. 
Uh, it's important to those who realize the importance of having biblical authority for what we practice in the Christian religion, the Church of Christ. Paul said to Titus 2,000 years ago, speak the things that become sound doctrine. Uh -huh. Titus 2 and verse 1. Listen to Paul as he's headed to Nero's chopping block. 2 Timothy 1 chapter 4 verse that is. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Paul said, I know you can quote it. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, watch this now, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Or they will not put up with sound doctrine. After their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. I drop out here tonight to tell you that fables won't save, but the word of God will save. Am I right about it? Somebody says uh, you people are always challenging uh, others about sound doctrine. Well, when you go out and pick watermelons, uh, uh, you look at it and you thump it. Am I right about it? Uh, 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 you, when you're in the grocery store, you're thumping that watermelon. And whenever we challenge you about something that you're preaching, something that you're doing, we're not doing anything but thumping you. Am I right? If you, what you do and what you say, what you practice can't take a good thumping, there can't be much to what you're doing. Or it's too much to what you're doing. Mm, Acts 17 11, the Bible says these were more, talking about that thumping there. Acts 17 11, the Bible says these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. Wherever those things were so, that's why they thumped the preaching of the apostle. They wanted to make sure those things were so. There are 929 chapters in the Old Testament. There are 266, 260 chapters in the New Testament. This gives us a total of 1,189 chapters on an average 18 per book. Psalm 117, the shortest chapter is also the middle chapter of the Bible being the 595th chapter. If you don't believe this, start accounting and there are 23,145 verses in the Old Testament and 7,957 verses in the New Testament. This gives us a total of 31,102 verses. But remember, the important thing is that every word, every inspired verse of the Bible is part of the message of God having been produced by the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy chapter uh, 3 and verse number 16. I see you right there. 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 16 uh, Paul uh, talking uh, he said uh, for all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction and instruction in righteousness that the, that, man, of God, that the man of God might be perfect, might be perfect. Furnished, 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 furnished under every but the, all scripture is given what? Yeah. the inspiration of God 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 20 uh, how the Bible talks again about the inspiration of uh, the Holy Scriptures uh, the Bible says no knowing this first, first no that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation the for the prophecy not came not in old time by the will of man holy, holy, holy men of old speak as they were moved as they were moved, by the, moved by the Holy Ghost. Am I right about it? When Isaiah said it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. He was moved by the Holy Ghost. Am I right about it? Yes! I'm here to tell you the message of the Bible was protected by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. John 16, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So the message of the Bible was protected by the Holy Spirit. 
and the presence of books, chapters, and verses are for an inspired but relevant purpose to help navigate and search and study the Bible. I'm talking about book, chapter, and verse. In our text, Jesus found a passage of scripture. And, and it's amazing that this book was chosen. Uh, that minister that's mentioned in the text uh, was a servant who was in charge of going to get the scrolls. And uh, each time they would study, that servant would go and get the scroll that had been chosen for the reading of that day. So Jesus comes in as his custom was. There's some who say we don't know anything about Jesus during the so-called silent years of his life. But I do know every Sabbath day because the Bible says as his custom was, he was in the, in the synagogue on the Sabbath. So I at least can account for one day of the week. Help me somebody. So he wasn't in Tibet. He wasn't well somewhere. He was a carpenter's son. He wouldn't have been a good carpenter if he was gone all the time. And I text Jesus found the passage of scripture. Actually it's amazing. And so he finds this scroll. He stood up for to read. And that was handed him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Now that's, that's divine providence. The main thing or the important thing as far as I'm concerned is that Jesus knew where it was and he found and read it and made proper application where the direct command was properly understood and applied the approved example does not conflict with other teachings on the same subject and the inference is necessary and does not conflict other teachings on the same subject. That's when we know scripture has been properly applied. Am I right? Now there's some people who prefer to float on the iceberg of presumption. That simply says if the Bible doesn't expressly forbid it, it's okay. Well, nowhere in the Bible does it tell you to not build an ark. But you're not building an ark. Why not? Because you know good and well Nobody, God hasn't told you to build an ark. When an ark was, uh, when an ark was commanded, God told Noah to build that ark. We understand what's relevant to us and what is not, but some people just don't care. Some people really don't care. They really don't care what they do according to the scripture. If what they do is according to the scripture, they do what they want, but you can't do what you want when you drive. You, you, you don't do what you, what, you, what you want to do when you go to the zoo. When you go and see the gorillas, how many of you jump in there? You can do it. There's no sign that said don't jump in with the gorillas. But simply because there's no sign that said don't jump in with the gorillas. You going to go jump in with the gorillas? No, you have better sense than that, right? Amen. Now, I'm, 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 now, I'm going to be just like my daddy. I'm coming on down the line people up talking about give God a hand clap of praise. When's the last time God has needed to have a hand clap to be praised? God is praised when you live the life you should live. God is praised when I live the life I should live. When you do what God tells you to do, God is praised. Give God a hand clap of praise. Where is the book? Chapter and verse. folk going around calling themselves pastor and you haven't been ordained as an elder and you younger than everybody in the group where is the book chapter and verse if you go to Philippians 1 and 1 you go run into trouble let's go over there and read it Oh, my time is running out. I'm have to make up for lost time here. It's not lost. I make up, just make up time here. Come on now, Philippians one and one. You're running into trouble if you go over there. Mm -hmm. If you're running from a bear and you turn toward a lion, and you're still in trouble. Hello, Paul and Timothy. Philippians who are Paul and who? Paul and Timothy. Yeah, that's the Timothy. Yeah. Jesus Servants of Jesus Christ. To all the saints in Christ. To all the saints in Christ. At Philippi. Which are at Philippi. This, this was a local congregation. Just a minute. This was a local congregation of the Church of Christ. 
Romans 16, 16, Paul says, salute one another with the Holy Kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. This was one of them. I know it was a church of Christ because the Baptist church wasn't back there. The Catholic church wasn't back there. The Lutheran church wasn't back there. Somebody say, you shouldn't call name. God did. Jesus did. When Saul was on the road of Damascus, he didn't say somebody, somebody. He said, Saul, Saul. He didn't say somebody, somebody. Say amen if you can. I'm not mad, I just look this way. And then gonna call yourself senior pastor at that. Now let's go back to Philippians 1 and 1. What does the Bible say? Paul and Timothy, the service. Paul and Timothy, Christ, the service. Jesus Christ. Wait a minute, why isn't that enough? Serve. Why isn't that enough? Serve. To all the saints in Christ Jesus. To all the saints in. How did they get into Christ? In Galatians. Galatians 3, 26, 27. They were baptized into Christ. Read. Which had Philippi. Which had Philippi. With the bishops. With the what? Bishops. Plural. With the bishops. And deacons. They had a plurality of bishops. bishops. Yes, so that means as much as I respect T.D. Jakes' uh, oratorical skill, he shouldn't be the only bishop over there. I know it's not the church of Christ and I'm not trying to down anybody. I know I'm calling names. But see, if you don't call names, folks don't know who you're talking to. Hey, quit that. Quit that. Who are you talking to? Stop. You have five children. Stop. Now what do you do? You call their name. Now if you were to have, now it doesn't make sense to have two bishops. Right? Do you think there's anybody in that organization who has as much power as he? No. That's because that's the way he wants it. And our so-called pastors in the Church of Christ are really not pastors. You don't have the authority a real pastor has. They can change the name of that church without asking you. And you can't change Sunday school books. Pastor and senior pastor at that. Where is, what, who almost asked, where is your mind? And somebody said, he's talking about something. I'm talking about anybody who's a shoe fits. If the shoe fits, where? Why are you doing it? That's what I want to know. Why are you doing it? Why? Why do you have to be called pastor? Well, I want people to respect me. You know what it is? Those Baptist friends of yours are getting to you. And when you say you're a preacher or a minister, you feel like you slighted. Yeah. So you got to say, I'm, a, I'm the pastor. And what, I, and re, what really bothers me is folk in the church don't even say anything about it. If you riding on a bus and the signs say cliff ahead. <laughs> cliff ahead. Well, I don't want to disturb the driver because he... <laughs> Wait a minute. We're on the bus. We're on the bus. And it said, cliff ahead. And the driver's driving 65, 70 miles an hour. And the folk on there just clapping their heads. Oh, we go on to see the king. You sure are soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Oh, Lord, now over the cliff you go. Because you didn't want to offend your pastor. But if your pastor doesn't preach book, chapter, and verse and does not properly apply, you need to get off that bus. Praise dancing. You don't get enough on Saturday night? Why am I looking at you? <laughs> <laughs> you praise dancing pastor did I tie that up tight when you tie up your shoes you don't want to tie them where you have to tie them up again Philippians 1 1 tied that knot didn't it if you, if you don't have a plurality, plurality of bishops why are you calling yourself pastor and even if you do have don't have ordained elders you don't have any scripture any book chapter verse for calling yourself the pastor 
Somebody say amen. amen. Praise teams. Why are you doing it? Where is the book, chapter, and verse for praise? See, now I know one person can lead the singing. You've been leading the singing, haven't you? One man. Why do we need two? Huh? Don't you know one will work? Y'all were singing it so beautifully with one. Now Paul says, see, that's in the worship. So, yeah, sound like I'm doing, look like I'm doing karate, but I'm not. He says, see. Now, the necessary fact is that somebody's got to lead the song. Now, if he said women hold the key silence in the churches, that automatically knocks out women song leaders. Hello. 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 So I know one to work. Why do you need to? A whole lot of folks just want to be seen. Just because you have a beautiful alto voice doesn't mean you ought to get up to church and show it off. Sometimes you can't worship because somebody behind you, oh, I love Jesus. And when they when the baskets pass, they don't give a thing. Hush. Let me, let me talk about these praise teams here. Woo I told you it was gonna be rough, didn't I? You don't have a giving team. You don't have a giving team. You, why don't, wouldn't you like to have a giving team where other folk give for you? No, everybody gives. Why don't you get a giving team? You don't have a communion team where folk commune for you? How would you have felt if this morning eight or nine folk lined up across the auditorium and they took the bread and the juice for you? No, oh, no, no, no. I want to commune myself. Well, why don't you want to sing yourself? Yeah, no giving team, no communion team. You don't have a confession team. You don't have anybody come up here and confess your fault for you, do you? Amen? You don't have a confession team, but you have a praise team. I'm talking to you. All over the world, I'm just asking the question. Somebody said, yeah, you, 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 you being a bully. There comes a time to tell it like it is. And one time I did a lot of things I regret. But now God has given me another mind. A renewed mind. For book, chapter, and verse. I'm satisfied with that. You don't have a confession team and some of these folks just get an hour for a concert. No book, no chapter, no verse, no direct command, no apostolic example, no necessary inference, singing the same stanza until the sun goes down and cows crow like roosters. They can sing all day, but they want to drive through sermon. Book, chapter, and verse. How am I doing here? Y'all ain't say enough. How am I doing? Am I doing all right? Yeah, I'm stepping on some toe. My daddy said, you ain't really preaching, son, until folk get quiet. Folk jumping up, yeah, yeah, hallelujah. You ain't going to do that when I start talking about you shacking up. They'll talk about somebody, somebody's marriage, uh, talking about adultery, but them, those same folk are living with somebody who ain't, and like Jesus said, and he who thou now has is not your husband. How you gonna talk about somebody else? We all need to get straight. I need to get straight. You need to get straight. Am I right about it? Woo! If unless you think my homiletical skills have left me, the plate, the moment one, I won't be long. The place of the scripture was written. That's point number one. People do a lot of talking and guessing. Mm-hmm. They do a lot of talking and guessing outside what is written or plainly accepted as a standard. If you ask me what time it is, I'm not going to sit up and say, I guess, 
I guess it's about 5.30, somewhere between 5.30 and, and 8 o'clock, somewhere. How many of you want that kind of time? You ask somebody what time it is, what do you want them to do? You want them to look at their watch or their phone, right? You want the exact time. Am I right? So, now, why did I ask that question about that? We have too many who have watches, but they have the wrong time. The wrong doctrinal time. And this lectureship is about us having the same time on our doctrinal watches. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I got to hear up now. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that y'all speak the same thing and that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So the place of the scripture was written. It was written. That's point number one. The place of the scripture was written. Now I'm an Uber driver. When a call comes in on my phone app, it doesn't say somebody needs to deliver in a brown house in North Dallas. Wait a minute, a brown house in North Dallas? Or a white house in North Dallas? No, 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 no. They are specific. 6909 such and such street. You know why they're specific? Because they want the delivery to go to the right address. And the reason some of these churches and preachers are at the wrong address, at the wrong place, is because somebody's not giving them the right address from the pulpit and from the leadership. Amen. Paul said, do all things decently and in order. Amen. Be careful if it's not a direct command, if it's not an approved example, if it's not necessary. And you can't tell me eight folk are necessary to lead the singing. Because one man did it. Oh, I could talk about a lot of things that are written. Matthew 4 and 4. You remember Jesus was in the wilderness? And he said it is written in verse 4, verse 7 and 10. Luke 24, 46 to 48. Thus it is written. Uh-huh. John 5, 39. Jesus said, search the scriptures. If they hadn't been written, they wouldn't have been able to search the scriptures. John 20, 30 and 31. The Bible says Jesus truly did Jesus many other signs in the presence of the disciples. He said, but these are written that you might believe. Am I right? Acts 8 and verse 26, the place of the scripture he read was this. Mm -hmm. All right. The place of the scripture he read was this. Well... Point number two, Jesus knew the place where it was written. That's familiarity of the scriptures. We need to be familiar yes. with the scriptures. Why? Because the Bible says in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sin, nor sitteth in the seat of the scum. But his law, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, somebody say you're sounding like a Baptist preacher. A Baptist preacher would never preach what I'm preaching. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what scripture were I? Yeah. yeah, it day and night for, watch this, the one who does not walk in the pathway of sin. The one who does not uh, sit in the seat of the scornful. And the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law. And in his law. Does he meditate. He meditates day, day and night. Day watch, watch this. Watch yeah. it. He. He shall be like he a tree. shall be, be like a tree. Like a tree. tree. Planted. Planted. The rivers of water. By the rivers of water. You know why some people are weak? They are not in the scriptures day and night. Am I right about it? We need to know the difference between Bible and all the other things we're reading. Goldilocks and the Three Bears is not a Bible story. Mother Goose is not a Bible story. I'm coming on down. Peter Pumpkin, Peter, Peter Pumpkin Eater is not a Bible story. Cinderella is not a Bible story. The Wizard of Oz is not a Bible story. The Lion King is not a Bible story. Frozen it's not a Bible story. Mr. Peppermint was not an apostle. And Mr. Rogers' neighborhood was not in Galilee. The three stooges were not in the fiery furnace. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, SpongeBob, Beavis, and Butthead were not the kind of children Jesus wanted. And the real Superman is Jesus. Anybody who can walk the water, 
calm the raging sea is a real superman. Am I right? These are popular saying, but they're not biblically based. The birth of Jesus is a real story. I'm in my conclusion, the child of Jesus, the childhood of Jesus is a real Bible story. The ministry of Jesus is a real Bible story. The miracles of Jesus uh -huh, were real Bible stories. The suffering of Jesus was a real Bible story. The death of Jesus was a real Bible story. The resurrection of Jesus was a real Bible story. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 3. And then number 3, other people could verify what was written. Other people could verify. So it was written. They could find the place where it was written. And they could verify. If we could get those three done, things done, we would be all right. I have book, chapter, and verse for baptism. Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, and 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus said, uh, heaven and earth, uh, all power in heaven and earth had been given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to deserve all things. Whatsoever I've commanded you, I know I have book, chapter, and verse for baptism. Acts chapter 2 and verse number uh, 22. Ye men were saw the verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them under Acts chapter 2 verse 22 you men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles signs and wonders which God did by him in the midst of you whom yourselves also know him being delivered by the determined counsel and for now I'm talking about book chapter and verse book chapter and verse and at verse 38 then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins Acts 2 and verse number 20, Acts 20 22 and verse 16 and now I'm talking about book chapter and verse Acts 22 and 16 and now watch Harris now rise be baptized wash away thy sin calling on the name of the Lord I have book chapter and verse that the Lord will walk with me David said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters. Is there somebody here? Is there somebody here who has not been functioning according to book, chapter, and verse? More importantly, is there anybody watching? And you have not been functioning according to book, chapter, and verse. Are you willing to make a change? Are you willing to make a change? You have to be bold and courageous to make that change many changes in my life require courage and when God takes hardiness and replaces it with humility you can't help but have when you ain't got no money I'm not, I'm not speaking bad English. My daddy used to say, would you rather say I am poor or I is rich? <laughs> See, now I appreciate a dollar. Five dollars. I even told my wife, honey, you manage money better than I do. Paul said, we all know he said, husband is the head of the wife. We've worn that out. And it's still right. But it also says submitting yourself one to another. Yeah. Honey, if you can handle these finances better, well, all these bill collectors won't be calling you. <laughs> I will follow you. If, and I said, if there comes a time where a decision has to be made, I hope you'll respect me as the head of the house. Yeah. So now, when I get the money, I give it over to her. That doesn't make me less of a man. That makes me right. See, an ignorant man is one who does not know he's ignorant. And doesn't know what to do about the ignorance. Well, all right. 
But you see, after all these years, it finally dawned on me. God gave us women for a reason. Most women are down the street waiting for you. When you argue, they're already down the street on you. One time I didn't respect the women like I should. But now I do. She's not my daughter. I'm not her daddy. I'm her husband. Now you can say what you want to say about it. But at least I'm trying my best to do what's right where I am today. I'm going to tell you something. God, God will give you the wisdom to differentiate between his chastisement. Come on, stand with me. Come on, stand with me. Come on. God, I'm going to hold your hand. Are you all right? <laughs> God will give you the wisdom to differentiate between his chastisement and man. See, man will chastise you simply because they don't like you. They don't like what you're saying. They don't like what you stand for. But when God chastises you, he loves you. He said, whom he loves, he chastises. And if you don't accept chastisement, you are a fatherless child. I could have used that word, but I didn't want to use that word. But it's book, chapter, and verse. So if, if, if God can change me, he can change you. I'm speaking to those of you who are across the world. Those of you who are here tonight. God can change you. If you're not treating your wife right, if you're not treating your husband right, if you're not treating the church right, God can change you. But you must want to change. When I gave myself to God, I realized it wasn't the power wasn't in me. But the power is in God. He'll walk with you. <laughs> when you're about to fall, He'll hold you up. Am I right about it? Won't He hold you up? Yeah, Lord. I know He will. Don't y'all bother me about how I sound. No Baptist preacher would preach what I preach here tonight. Because I was in a church. In a denomination of the church preaching the gospel. The man told me he wanted me to bring back his remembrance of the Bible because he had had some strokes and whatnot. When I started preaching and I looked on the front of that, he'd walk with you. And I said, Reverend should not be up here. Pastor should not be up here. I was out of that church. <laughs> See, when you go somewhere and preach, and denominational folk talk about what a good job you did. You didn't do your job. Watch out now. Oh Lord. So maybe somebody here has been convicted. Maybe you haven't been have you maybe you haven't clung to the New Testament plan strong enough. Maybe you've been listening to the wrong person telling you you can go to church with them on family day. Listen, let me ask you something. We're married to Christ, right? Right. If we are his bride and you have a bride, you miss church one Sunday, you have played off on Jesus. Somebody say it doesn't make sense. It's just one night. What if your wife went somewhere else one night? You'd be through, wouldn't you? You hear the gospel. Romans 10, 17. Believe it, same scripture. And additional scriptures, Mark 16, 15, and 16. Repent of your sins. Repent. And repentance doesn't mean slow down. It means stop. Somebody asked Brother Keeble, Brother Keeble, what does repentance mean? You ought to understand what repentance means. You ought to understand. Okay. You ought to understand what repentance means. If a policeman stops you, and he starts beating you over the head for running a stop sign. Do you want him to stop or do you want him to slow down? <laughs> he said, I want him to stop. He said, well, that's what repentance means. Stop. 
and that's what he wants me to do. Stop and be baptized. Stand on your feet. Come to Jesus. When the Savior calls, I will answer when he calls for me. I